888-3629 or visit kids at lunakidsdance.org. On Thursday, January 17th from 7 to 9 p.m., the Ecology Center hosts Sustainable Urbanism. From a recent tour of major European cities armed with just a folding bike, David Baker reflects on sustainable urbanism. This event is free and will be held at 2530 San Pablo Avenue in Berkeley. Call 510-548-2220, extension 233 for more details. Garden for the Environment offers an exciting workshop on methods of growing roses without toxic pesticides on Saturday, January 19th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The fee is $5 and the event will be held on 7th Avenue at Lawton Street in San Francisco. Pre-registration is required. Please call 415-731-5627 or email info at gardenfortheenvironment.org for more details. The community calendar is produced by members of the First Voice Apprenticeship Program. Send your listing at least three weeks in advance to KPFA Box 51, 1929 Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Berkeley, California, 94704. Fax them to 510-848-3812 or email us at calendar at kpfa.org. Attention to the community calendar. Tell us if your event is wheelchair accessible. To hear this calendar again, call 510-848-6767, extension 621. The calendar is also online at kpfa.org. Apex Express, Asian Pacific Expression. Community and cultural coverage, music and calendar, new visions and voices, coming to you with an Asian Pacific Islander point of view. It's time to get on board the Apex Express. What's up, what's up? This is Y.E. Happy New Year. We're here, Apex Express. This is the second Thursday of the year, and we're bringing on some more music and some more stories for you this this Thursday. And I'm here with G. Hey, how you all doing on this rainy night up here in Berkeley, California? I'm great. And I'm actually glad to be sitting next to one of our guests tonight, Diana Wu, who's part of the National Network for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. And we're going to be talking to her about the upcoming national conference that's taking place this um, next week in Houston, Texas. And we'll also be talking with Tao Nguyen, who's actually a Virginia-bred songwriter and just... She hums. Yeah, she hums. She hums. And we're, gonna, we're about to hear some of American that tonight. Idol. Mm-hmm. Humming and beatboxing at the same time. And she like Vietnamese music along with that, or is this just um, an I don't know if it's Vietnamese track. music, but, you know, okay. we, we might be surprised tonight. Okay. So we're going to talk with her a little bit later today. And right now, though, we're going to get into some music. Shots, chemical bombs, were sliced with a knife, shrapnel within flesh, children poisoned to death, defend the villages, soldiers killed in calm, better contract has been cracked, split up in attack with no tracks, and they only fight back for survival reasons, and they wish to the sky for the will to keep breathing, the jungles are a prison, scarred into a vision. Now I want you to listen, cause our people have risen, starving for any meal, they kept it concealed, their blood spills all over the rice fields, for real, a tragic massacre of tears and emotions that can flood the Mekong River to be an ocean, our people are suffering, and time is running out, I see my mother working late again, father holding paper tents, 
drama on the corner we ignore but we relate to them stay within the circle representing every state we in penetrate the system now the prison wants to take us in listen to my elder folks cousin loves to sell a smoke sisters in the kitchen cooking breakfast to the smell of smoke flea market we can sleep in 60 minutes to two hours been working overtime and handle time to take a shower family business slow still on the go blow for blow we slug it out against the winter and snow ever since existence we have been survivors neglected never clean the country just wanted to live and let live now it's been 30 years since imprisonment in the jungle for the moment remind your elders and educate the young laotian government genocide human rights and violation clock is running down to total annihilation lift a finger now stop procrastinating and save a child save a mother throw your clock and watch your way the time is now stop searching for time time is running now stop searching for time the time is now Another dying relative Sleeping life away like a sedative Death is interactive Don't it make you feel relative Children feeling negative Repetitive survivor mode Spirits from the old Neglected perspective grows If we let it The mind stays infected So memories oppress it Mother's fetuses die Hold your chin high Let the wind dry your eyes Here we go Levitate, aggravate, penetrate Let him hate Escalate what you know, mental state gotta grow. System teacher to fear being bold. Long people, hard to go, dying slow. So do the math with me. Subtract morality, at fatality. Divide broken pride equals America lied. Tears blur our vision, so we listen to the violence. She could be the silence or the sirens. Divided corner streets. Fight for the air we breathe, tears we see, families we grieve. This is disgusting, mustard, wipe a life for two. Fallen soldiers, yesterday's news. Fathers in the grave, nobody left to fill the shoe. Wake up the gunshots, silence is just a dream. Wake up the gunshots, silence is just a dream. Wake up the gunshots, silence is just a dream. Wake up the gunshots, silence is just a dream. Delicious Venom with the track called 30 Year Secret and Delicious Venom is um, a Hmong group um, their MySpace is actually myspace.com at Delicious Venom if you want to hear more of their tracks and right now we're actually delighted to have our um, guests with us we have Diana Wu of the National Network for Immigrant Refu Refugee Rights and Andrea Silva who's also interning there from I Illinois and I'd like to thank you for coming on Apex Thanks for inviting us. Thanks for having me. Of course. And um, to give our listeners just some background on your organization, um, I know you've been on, on before, but it's a new year and we might have some new listeners. Um, what, what does your organization do? Um, the National Network for Immigrant and Refugee Rights is based in Oakland, California. I think we're like 20 or 20... <coughs> We're over 20 years old this year, um, and we are a national network, mostly of community-based organizations, organizations that really work in immigrant and refugee communities, and also our allies who are often lawyers, advocates, activists, um, and also a lot of regional networks. So we're a national network of lots of folks who really um, care about lifting up the voices of immigrant and refugee people in immigration debates, and also we do a lot of 
policy analysis and then we help sort of translate policy back to the community level. That means language. It also means like changing it from like political speak. Um, and we also do sort of political education with um, immigrant and refugee communities around building multiracial movements for social justice. Wow, that's a great, great work. And it just sounds like um, you guys do a lot of work over there. And with your organization being around for 20 years, um, immigration issues have actually been around for a long time. And if you think about this country, you know, most people have come here from somewhere else, you know, unless you're indigenous to this country. Um, but what do you see as some of the um, past policies that have been in place as well as the current issue, current policies that are in place during this current um, Bush administration? And what do you see as the problems? So, you know, and um, one of the things that we always tell in our political education for immigrant communities is that um, the immigrant rights movement really like the reason that a lot of people of color immigrants were able to come is really only after the opening up of the 1965 Immigration Act that meant that it ended sort of racial quotas um, in immigration. And so that was sort of like the, f the formal end of like direct, intentional, obvious racism in immigration policy. Of course, we all know that even up to today, we still have to deal with a lot of the the policies are it's institutionalized racism because there are still quotas. There are still longer lines for people um, from China and Philippines and Vietnam. Um, and so there's still sort of racism in the immigration policies. Um, in 1986 and 1996, both there were sort of um, 1986, there was a, enacted an amnesty for folks in the Bracero program. And that meant a lot of folks who had been brought over as cheap labor from Mexico um, during and before World War II were actually able to get some of the benefits of their work, right? So that, that happened in 1986, and that was really a really big benefit for a lot of folks. Um, in 1996, you see that in the Clinton administration, um, <clears throat> a lot of really punitive measures were enacted, and actually a lot of, um, it, it was like this, it's this nexus, right, where um, sort of a precursor to three strikes law, but like a lot of what used to be like not felony offenses became felony offenses and then at the same time um, felony offenses meant that you were deportable so it just it meant a lot more sort of um, a lot harsher punitive measures for any kind of immigration infraction and then now under the Bush regime I think what we see is that the groundwork that was laid in 96 from then to now um, but the actual enforcement of a lot of those punitive measures has gone way up right so it used to be that like okay so you overstay your visa <clears throat> and by the way, that's the that's how most people become sort of quote unquote unauthorized migrants, right? You overstay your visa, and I, I've done that, you know, in other places. So it's like you overstay your visa. That used to not be a deportable offense. It just meant that you like were paid a fine and you went back to INS or you know at the time, and you'd like, I'm sorry, I overstayed my visa. You know, uh, let me pay my fine. Let me um, reapply. And but what we see now is that a lot of times ICE is now coming to people's houses when they just overstayed their visa what you know and this happens to people of all classes um and puts them in detention centers puts them in jail um and then tries to deport them and that was actually another thing that happened in 1996 was that the mandatory jail sentence for any kind of um infraction on immigration related issues so you should not be um a jailable offense at all and do you see any changes or anything hopeful coming up in this year where it's election year and, you know, the presidential candidates are debating about immigration? You know, that's a really good question. I forgot to mention that, like, right now, <clears throat> um, so interior enforcement, what we see is there's there's sort of this increased um, jailing of people, increased surveillance by ICE. You see ICE even patrolling in Chinatown. I saw them, you know, just openly hanging out in Chinatown. Um, they're cruising through the Fruitvale. So it's just um, them hanging out, but also, like, the board, the um, building of the border wall has been a really, you know, huge issue, both in terms of like giving more money to to companies that are in the so-called security industry, gives more money to companies like Halliburton, who not only build bases in Iraq in the war, but also are building fences and borders, um, and also like the companies that sort of make all of the Humvees and everything else that, that are used to patrol the border. And then finally, there's like this international economic piece, you know, so, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, this international economic piece with... Um, 
all of the international policies around migration used to be about human rights, right, for a long time, and we're trying to ratify the International Migrants Convention, but now really the U.S. and also at the U.N. level, you see at the international level, everybody's talking about migration in terms of remittances, in terms of money that hardworking folks are sending back to their families, and then the governments and the companies are trying to get a piece of that. Right. So you see this sort of like it's not about human rights. It's not about human well-being anymore. It's about how much money is moving around in the international arena. So in terms of hopefulness in this election year, you know, right now, um, I think there's a couple of things that are happening. Right. Folks are jockeying for position. The, The candidates are jockeying for position. I think if we can if we can influence the candidates to talk about human rights and to talk about just immigration and fair um, immigration and that policy sh- policy should be based on like a humane view of the world that's what we should be doing um, what I see right now is that you know we saw Clinton she flip flopped on the issue she sort of didn't know what to do to say about driver's licenses in New York um, we see that Obama is sort of trying not to say anything yet right but he's heading towards states like California he's heading towards states like Texas where there's a lot of immigrants and so he's going to have to take a stand and what we also see is that Edwards is the only person Person who's um, who's actually taking a real stance in terms of um, in terms of immigration policy? Um, as far as um, you know, the immigration issues taking you know, I was actually going to ask you how has there ever been a time where these immigration issues were taken to the world court and which you kind of address? And I'm I'm wondering if at this conference that's coming up this coming next week, mm-hmm. um, if these issues would, you know, if that's a possibility where, you know, you're you're reminding us that we're bring, bringing these issues to the world. Right, right. Oh, that's really, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, we just had that international tribunal um, on Katrina. And um, that's actually one of the reasons why the conference is in Houston, is that we're going to be able to bring folks from New Orleans over um, to Houston because... You know, because people there who have been working with guest workers, people who've been brought over and living under um, near slavery conditions have been trying to work and build with folks who are either displaced from Nolans and who've been able to come back. So we're, we're going to be talking about that kind of work. Um, there is actually the net network is about to release, I think, a, the final report. It's called our 100 Stories Report. Um, And it's part of the Immigrant Rights and Justice Program. So this report is um, sort of documents a lot of the stories of human rights abuses that have been happening around immigration policy, around border enforcement, around interior violations of human rights. And what we see is, again, people from all kinds of um, communities are affected. We have stories and testimonies from Somali communities who were detained at the airport, and it was particularly someone who was an important activist in the Somali community who was detained and targeted for deportation. So the community interpreted that as an attempt to intimidate them, yeah, to <clears throat> intimidate them to keep from sort of moving a progressive agenda. And we also saw cases of like a trans woman, um, two trans folks that I know of, one who was um, denied her HIV medication and subsequently died in jail. Um, and another woman, you know, several women who have been harassed in INS detention or ICE detention um, and or raped by their guards and stuff like that. So you see this nexus of like um, queer rights and immigrant rights issues also, um, as well as I think all of us have probably heard the stories that ICE has been um, in terms of how they like raid families and homes. There's a family in North, a Filipina family in North Carolina um, who's lived there for like 22 years, you know, have family, a house, kids. Um, I think they have dogs, too. And uh, but yeah, ICE came and got them after 22 years, 26 years in the States um, because they weren't married when they came over from the Philippines. But then they got married, but then they didn't tell anybody and they didn't know that they had to tell anybody. So, you know, we have stories like that from all over the country. Wow. And um, it's I mean, without you telling us about it, I don't I don't think a lot of people even know about this. So I'm glad you're here to tell us about this Um, and this national conference that's taking place. If you can tell us a little bit about that. Oh, man. (laughs) I could tell you that I think we're expecting about 500 people from all over the country to come into Houston. Um, The conference is from January 18th through the 20th. That's next week. Um, I'm really excited because we have these we have great people. We have people bring testimonies of their actual experiences with Border Patrol, with ICE. They're coming from, you know, places as diverse as Tennessee, Louisiana, 
Massachusetts, Minnesota, Milwaukee, um, you know, Portland, uh, Seattle, the Bay, L.A. Um, <clears throat> we got, <laughs> we have like a couple hundred, 145 organizations, I think, are going to be represented. Again, most folks are from immigrant communities. Um, we have a lot of workshops. We have an exciting program, at, you know, featuring folks from like the Black Lines from Just Immigration. We have an amazing um, one-woman theater piece. Um, Kehan Irani is coming from New York to help bring it down, you know, bring up the stories of immigrant women in the post-9-11 era. Um, and we have some other amazing artists and musicians. And we have a lot of youth coming. I think we have something like 70 youth coming again from all over the country, from like Bloomington, Indiana to San Diego, California. Wow, sounds like, I mean, I want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> so if people want to, you know, know, find out more information about that, where would they go and how would they find out? They can check out our website. The website is www.nnirr.org. And um, I just want to give it up for API groups who are coming from especially the Bay and Boston and L.A. to be in Houston because I know a lot of times, you know, folks in API communities don't think that immigration really is our issue. And I just have to say, you know, props to the folks who are there because there's a lot of workers, a lot of laborers, and this stuff affects all of us, um, whether we're, not, we're on the front lines right now or not. It comes back around. And it's not too late to sign to sign up. It's not too late to register. You can register online. There's a link on our website um, right now. If you can make it down to Houston, you're totally welcome. And uh, online registration will close on Tuesday. So, you know, if you if you're planning on coming, register before Tuesday. All right, you heard that. And I'd like to thank Diana Wu and Andrea Silva for joining us on Apex Express. Thank you. And this is KPFA and KPFB in Berkeley, and KFCF in Fresno, and online at www.kpfa.org. The time is 7:21. And why? I think we got some music coming up next before we have our live musician come in. Yes, we in do. House. We have um, a track by Isho Yi Park, and it's called "Distant Stars." <laughs> above open book of land our chevy blazer rides inside the highway spine low mountains and clouds hemming horizon hallelujah in darkness i close my eyes and my throat catches fire to realize that jolmin is still suckling her baby and adjusting his small cap carrying his whole carriage down to the l train and alisiang lies breathless in the night with the heat skimming her chest while a thousand seagulls are flying and raspberry is braiding china's hair and the fall of light against the back of a lake somewhere must be breathtaking and sunsets still break over bushwick Southside and oakland and star fruit contain the shape of a star inside them and mariposa is still standing in a new york strobe light cursing singing and crying and edward garcia is skydiving and sepoy is sitting on a fire escape writing and Tayo is rhyming on the corner of Cyprus and Linden Because David will hold my mouth in his mouth Because Tangmin is holding his mother crying Because there is rocking Because there is motion Because there is light Because there is rocking Because there is motion Because there is light
and lovers. I love the friends that we have become. Sullen, soft, holy, breakable, dusk, mottled headlight seekers. You bless me with unspeakable gifts like silence. Then father tearing door off hinges, stabbing of a best friend's brother, scarring us, grooving our identities like freshly dug tracks, and that wounded. All this sitcom, dirty couch, just a moment. Who will continue to love me? Who will I have died loving? Plum gifts of your heart swallowed. Let's take this night over graves. Let's illuminate this cupped space. Salt caves and precipices. Your mouth. A hot black flower. Let's take this night over graves. Let's illuminate this space. Salt caves and precipices. Your mouth, a hot black flower. just heard some of Ishil Park, a little bit of track problems there, but we are here back at KPFA in Berkeley, KFC, Evan Fresno, and online at www.kpfa.org. My name is G. The time is 725, and I'm going to throw it over to our host tonight, Miss Yi. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm here with Tao Wen, who's live in the studio, and she's going to be blessing us with her voice and her guitar a little bit later. Um, but right now, I wanted to actually introduce her formally and let you know a little bit about her. She's from Virginia. She's a Virginia-bred songwriter, and she has a knack for beatboxing and humming at the same time. So we're about to hear some of that, hopefully, today. Um, Tao, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm glad you are here, too. And I'd um, like to just start off um, with giving us an idea of how you got started in, in the music, and then tell us a little bit about growing up in Virginia. Uh, <laughs> well, I grew up uh, not in real Virginia, in the suburbs of D.C., which okay. uh, are like much like suburbs anywhere else. So if, if any of you out there have ever been to a Bed Bath & Beyond or seen a Starbucks, and also a lot of SUVs, and... Um, uh, Kids in strollers, that's pretty much what that was. Uh -huh. But I watched a lot of TV. I stayed inside a lot growing up. Uh -huh. And as far as getting involved in music, um, <laughs> part of that was I, I started playing guitar because I didn't really have anything else to do. And, uh, you know, I didn't have an overwhelming amount of friends. So um, I started when I was about 12 or 13, started playing and writing songs. Mm -hmm. And so would you say with the huge amount of TV, you know, or in media <laughs> that you're exposed to, would, yeah. would that be some influences in your songs today? Or, um, you know? mm, only my sense or my flair for the dramatic. Elsewise, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. It was just a way to pass the time. I do, know, uh, I do however, have... I know an obscene amount about celebrities from about 1992 to 97 because I watched Entertainment Tonight every night. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> and um, I'm also curious to know about, you know, just your ethnic background because your name, yeah. Tao Nguyen, is That's actually true. very distinct, you know. That's true. So tell us a little bit about your background. Um, well, I uh, made it up. No, just kidding. Uh, I'm, I'm Vietnamese. My parents are Vietnamese, and uh, that's my name. And I decided to to go with that uh, because it's my name. Mm -hmm. And have you been to Vietnam, or you know, has would you say like the Vietnamese in you actually comes out in your music, or? Um, I have not. I have not yet traveled back there. I was going to go on a uh, in college. We were going to do a volunteer thing, um, but SARS that SARS epidemic broke out, and I had the surgical mask, but they said it wasn't enough. So then I stayed. Uh, and as far as my ethnicity, um, that comes into play as any other biographical element would. You know, that's it's no more, no less than anything else. So. Mm -hmm. And um, so our listeners actually hear um, 
there's a wide range of listeners. And just to actually get into some of your music, I wanted mm-hmm. to have them, because we were talking about, you know, humming and beatboxing. What does that that's sound right. like, you know? Well, that sounds like me on the bus when I was 12, uh, really bored. But it also sounds like this. Um, for instance, the song Bag of Hammers, it starts on, on the record. It goes, uh, but I also was a really big salt and pepper kid when I was a fan, and I do this too much. Uh, yo, 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 baby pops. Just kidding. I won't do the rest. Uh, but there's that. And sometimes I like to do name that tune. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> um, are you ready? You're going to be naming. Okay. Okay. Um, you want um, more? Yeah. It's just that over and over again. Okay. But I'll do it, it though. Uh, it's a uh, yellow submarine. Okay, okay. I didn't know that. Oh. All right, all right. Well, maybe I'm really bad at it, though, so. No, you're really great. I'm Thanks. glad to, to have you here. Thank and, you. And um, actually, we're going to, if you want to, I know you brought your guitar. That's true. And um, we'd like to hear some of that, too. Sure, sure. Yeah, and uh, before you get into that, I'd like to just have you just kind of talk a little bit about your music. and. Right. You know, how how would you say, what would, what would you say what are your influences and your inspirations as far as your music? As far as music is concerned, um, well, it's all, all the songs are almost grossly autobiographical. Uh, so it's really, you know, songwriting started and continued and will end just as a way to sort of figure out what's going on. You know? And um, But my musical influences, I, I listened to Motown all the time when I was growing up, and I still do, and uh, country blues and, and older, old country music. Um, I was a huge Lucinda Williams fan, who's a, she's sort of an alt-country singer, or country. Um, and what else? Um, I like good pop music, you know, and I think that there is a fine line to toe between like uh songs songwriting with integrity and also uh things that people like to listen to or tap their feet to you know Mm -hmm. and right now i'd like to have you play some of your music and then i'd like to get into the songwriting with integrity thing because that that's oh sure yeah oh man i don't even know i didn't even mean to say that but we'll talk about it all All right. right this is called um do you have any preferences no okay this is called big kid table
much more lovely. Yeah, you are strong, 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 stronger than me. With a heart much more. If you're just tuning in, that was Tao Win live and direct from the studios right here on Apex Express, and so you're so we're here with Tao. And before you went into the music, actually, we we're talking about、um, little. You were talking a little bit about songwriting with integrity, and I'm curious to, <laughs> to hear what that is. Yeah, well, I shouldn't have said that because、uh, maybe I can't back it up. But、um, I, I was I was、uh, just referencing. Um, sort of dubious stigma of pop music, you know, because of what it has become or what it what it may or may not be today.、Uh, what is it? What it has evolved into, you know, where people see it as just this commercial vessel, you know, and、um, and and writing without sincerity. And there's, you know, in some cases it's very formulaic. In some cases, the performer has not written it. Mm-hmm. Which I mean you, has always happened, but then there's a certain level of、um, of compromise that I think people、uh, have acknowledged. And、um, and as far as writing with integrity, I just meant sincerity, you、mm-hmm. know, and、um, music as art, still as opposed to music as、um, sales pitch、mm-hmm. or or. Whatever. <laughs>、mm-hmm. And for you, you know,、um, like some artists have other people write their music and they sing it, right?、Mm-hmm. But for yourself, you write your、mm-hmm. own music. Yes, that's、mm-hmm. correct. But to you know, I mean, Billie Holiday never wrote any song, and then and、that's、but、true. there was soul in that, you know.、Mm-hmm. It's、uh, and I I don't mean to to demonize, but I'm just, I I'm saying that elements like that do exist somewhere out there in a bikini or whatever. <laughs> And、um, for actually, some of our audience members, our listeners、um, that want to catch you live、yes. and you know singing, performing,、um, where can they catch you? Actually,、uh, they can, if they have a hankering, come to Cafe du Nord on January twelfth, which is this Saturday,、uh, and I'll be playing with a few friends of mine from the city.、Um, show starts at nine thirty, I believe. Mm-hmm. And、um, so, so you'll be, you'll be in town this weekend, but、That's、I know、right. you're going, you know, all over the place touring. And、uh, um, yeah, I go to Europe next week.、Uh, I'm going on tour, and then after that, we're on tour with my band, the Get Down Stay Down, for 
probably the next three months mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. and Europe. Uh -huh. And talk a little bit about your band. Um, who's My part of band, it? And, you know. Three very strapping young gentlemen. Um, Willis Thompson, the drummer. Adam Thompson, no relation. Uh, bassist and Frank Stewart, the guitarist. And um, they're fantastic. They've become integral in the process. You know, we're, we're very much a band as opposed to a solo effort now. Um, and... Yeah. Go ahead. And how did you guys come together? Was it, you know, like organic or... Oh, yeah. Oh, guys? very, very much so. Uh, Willis, the drummer, and I went to William & Mary together in Virginia, went to college together. And um, Adam and I dated twice, um, both times unsuccessfully. And uh, then we decided we would stop trying to do that. And Frank recorded my first record, Like the Linen. Uh, we recorded that in his basement. And so th we've known each other for a few years now, and we're just really great friends. And, and I'm glad to have them along. I'm uh, grateful for it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, we're actually, we have time for one more song, if you'd like sure. to bless us with that. And um, after that, I'd like to have you give out some information so people can contact you. Oh, or, definitely. You know. Yeah, mm -hmm. for dates or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can go out. <laughs> Buy him a beer, no problem. This one's called Geography. Just tuning in, this is Y.E., and you just heard Tao win, and she's live in the studio today with us. And um, Tao, I'd like to give you a chance to give our give our listeners some information as far as your websites and how can they find out more about you and your music. Sure. Well, they can call me on my cell phone at 
No, just kidding. Uh, my website is tau, T-H-A-O, music.com. Same with MySpace. Your space. Um, what else can they do? That's pretty much it. All tour dates are posted. We're, we'll be on tour for what seems like the next lifetime. Uh, my, our new record is coming out on Kill Rock Stars on January 29th. And, uh, we, we hope they might give it a try. Great. And, um, I'd like to thank you for coming on Apex Express. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Of course. And, um, right now we're actually gonna move into the community calendar soon um and g are you ready yeah i am um there's also some music too uh, by ken oak do you want to hold off on that you want to just go um, straight into actually into the, uh, uh we let's hear some music actually um ken ken oak is a um, artist that um he's come up with a couple songs and i i chose this particular song it's a it's more of an instrumental but we'll get into that first and then we'll then we'll go into the community calendar after that okay hang on folks You're listening to 94.1 KPFN, KPFB in Berkeley, KFCF in Fresno, and online at www.kpfa.org. The time is 7.45. Time for the community calendar. We have been listening to Ken Oak and Maya says, excuse me, Maya. Maya's not here today. She is in L.A. way, but you know something? Thanks to her, we got some good music, including uh, Tao Wen, uh, which was just great. Sounds like a southerner, but uh, is yeah, Virginia's kind of south. Anyways, this is G here on Apex Express, 94.1 FM on KPFA and KPFB in Berkeley, KFCF in Fresno, and online at kpfa.org. 
Calendar of events we have coming up. A couple of things. A lot of music actually happening. There's going to be um, a benefit, a unique benefit for orphans, refugees of war, and um, abused children of Bamako, Mali. And another Vietnamese American, Unity Huynh, is going to be playing there. She actually plays the West African string instrument, the Kora. And she also plays uh, Vietnamese instruments. And there will also be music masters from Mali or from uh, West Africa going to be there as well. And that's Saturday, January the 12th at 8 p.m. And we are, um, it, rather, it's, it's going to be in Oakland, California. And for more information, it, it's um, the number that's, that's here is 510-599-2288. That's 510-599-2288. 2288. And also, um, there is going to be Okinawan music, uh, cultural heritage uh, on display, such as um, photos, uh, interviews, the history of Okinawan people, the diaspora. Okinawans uh, are found throughout the world because of the great migrations that happened at the um, turn of the century. Many came to the United States, and um, there are going to be uh, exhibits and a little bit about the history at the uh, Japanese American Historical Society in San Francisco. And that opens, that exhibit opens on Sunday, the um, 13th at 2 p.m. in San Francisco's Japantown, and the number is 415-921-5007. And I was just wondering if, uh, Hawaii, if you had any more um, calendar events before I go on. I've got a couple of more, but just curious before we cut people off, and I know they always have different stuff that uh, they have. Um, just wanted to re- remind our listeners about the national conference, the National Network for Immigrant and Refugee Rights is putting on in Houston, Texas on January 18th through the 20th and you can get more information on their site at http www.nnir.org and um, we'd like to actually remind remind myself that actually Diana um, pointed out the, the issue of you know this year being elections and it's so important for people to get educated about these issues around immigration and as, as well as all different issues. Um, and also um, more more information about Tao, who her show is this Saturday, and you can find out more information from her website at Tao, T-H-A-O, music.com. And I also want to say uh, we not just only have music on our calendar, but a film, uh, a documentary film that's opening up, uh, uh, about uh, um, a horrible situation that happened during World War II. About 300,000 Chinese were killed during the invasion of Nanjing by the Japanese Imperial Army. And this event is at the heart of a new film called Nanking. Uh, the film also looks at uh, the heroes of the international safety zone that was set up that saved thousands of people in Nanjing. And the uh, film is opening the 11th of January at the Landmark Theaters, both in Berkeley and in San Francisco. So for more information, you can go to www.nankingthefilm.com, and that's spelled N-A-N-K-I-N-G-T-H-E-F-I-L-M dot C-O-M. I know there's a lot of information that comes out here, but we just have to give out this kind of information before people um, get lost and they call us later or they call Lewis at the main office and they ask about all these things and we just, he can't know all these things. I also want to say, don't forget, there's uh, going to be a uh, uh, cover to cover Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, Amelia Gonzalez is going to be talking to the artistic director of Golden Thread Productions and the playwright uh, Ignacio Zulieta about Reorient. And which is the annual festival of short plays about the Middle East, and it's back for another uh, thought-provoking season. It's uh, five plays that reflect the diversity of the region, as well as uh, a lot of the problems that uh, we face there. And cover to cover, open book is Fridays uh, here, KPFA, um, 3 p.m. Also, this is Apex Express. If you want to get a hold of us, you can do so by going to uh, www dot apexexpress dot o r g and um, you can get more stories, more information there about the show, some audio clips. We also have um, 
Just email apex at kpfa.org, apex at kpfa.org. And we have a phone number, which is uh, 510-848-6767, extension 464. That's 510-848-6767, extension 464. Uh, also, just want to remind folks that next week our show is going to feature... Um, uh, more on the Vietnamese American community. There was just a, a very unique major survey done, uh, which we get a lot more information about a, a fairly unknown community and a fairly young community, actually. Also, a little bit about the apprenticeship, uh, the wonderful innovative program here at KPFA. Um, and we're also going to be doing a lot of other things, which I'm not sure about right now. But uh, in any event, I want to turn it back over to Ms. Y.E. Well, right now we're actually nearing the end of our show, and um, with all this information, like like G said, you know, you can always hit us up on our website. You know, we also have a MySpace that um, needs a little bit updating, but you know, it's it's still running. Um, it's MySpace.com at Apex Express, um, and you know, hit us up. We definitely want to hear from you, and for artists out there that might want to. Um, Play some, have us play some of your music. Um, we definitely welcome that, you know. So email us, get in contact with us. And uh, I think there is some more. Ishil Park, uh, spoken word coming up. Is that right on the yes, show? Maybe yes. a little bit about her before mm-hmm. we play this next cut. Um, our, our called work is love. Is yes, that really the yes. case? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. This next All track right. is called work is love, and I I really liked just the sound of it because you know work being you know my love, and then love being part of my work and. Also, you know, that, I just love the sound of that. So I like to, you know, just end off the show with that. Okay, hold on.
This is KPFA and KPFB in Berkeley and KFCF in Fresno. Just returned from a fat-gathering mission in Iran, former UN weapons inspector Scott Ritter and his delegation will lead the Iran Talks, a series of public forums on U.S. foreign policy. Ritter and Jeff Cohen, the founder of Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, will speak at the Mount Diablo Unitarian Universalist Church, 55 Eckley Lane in Walnut Creek, on Tuesday evening, January 15th at 7.30 p.m. Wheelchair accessible. For full information, please check the KPFA website or phone 